Hello students, in the previous session we have discussed regarding introduction to lathe, parts of a lathe machine, principle of lathe machine, as well as we have discussed regarding specifications of lathe machine. In today's session we will be discussing regarding what are the different operations which can be carried on the lathe machine and for these different operations what how the cutting tool has to be fixed, what is its direction and what will be the end product. We will be discussing all these things in this today's session so let us study these things one by one so in the lathe machine these are the basic machining operations which we are carrying here the first one will come the turning operation the second one is the facing operation third one is the knurling operation fourth one is the thread cutting operation Fifth one comes the drilling operation. Sixth one comes paper turning by two methods. One method is a tail stock method. Another method will come by the uh, tail stock method. Another will come the compound slide off compound slide swivel method. So we'll be discussing these machining operations in today's session one by one. So right now, when we move further, we'll be discussing these things in detail. So let us move further. <clears throat> yes, turning operation. So in this turning operation, if you observe here, this will be the initial cylindrical workpiece, which is being loaded within our chuck. So as uh, the cutting tool is moving from this end to the other end, you can see here, there is a hidden line, this thing, but this, this much amount of metal is being removed. So, in very very simple words what you can say that turning is an operation where the cutting tool moves parallel to the axis of a given workpiece the cutting tool is moving how it is moving this cutting tool it is moving in this direction and uh, this is direction it is parallel to this axis of this revolving workpiece so this operation we call it as turning operation so in this turning operation if you see on the other side we are providing the support this is the thing what the support provided by the tail stock that is the dead center that is a dead center another important thing you should always remember is in the lathe machine the workpiece is under continuous rotation that is the reason that you should not forget you should always show this arrow mark in this fashion if you don't show this arrow mark which means the workpiece is not under rotation you may lose marks so keep in mind always the workpiece is under continuous rotation which has to be shown by this arrow mark so when we are Moving the workpiece when you are moving the cutting tool from this end to the other end, you can see here the metal is being removed and is removed in the form of these chips, the spring spring like structure here. And the feed, if you observe here for the turning operation, it is in the form of a longitudinal feed, in the form of a longitudinal feed. So, in this, as the longitudinal feed is being carried, you can see initially this is the diameter of a given workpiece. Initially, this much is the diameter of the given workpiece before you start our turning operation. But after some time, as the cutting tool is being placed at this position, then you can see this much amount of metal is being removed. So, this is the initial diameter DI, and this will be the final diameter DF. So, what does this mean? It means that turning operation is an operation which is carried to reduce the diameter of a given workpiece to develop a cylindrical surface. And here the cutting tool moves in a direction parallel, parallel, keep this in mind, parallel to the axis of the revolving workpiece. So here in the bottom we have a video where you can understand how this process is being carried on the lathe machine. Yes. So you can see here this is the cutting tool. As this cutting tool is moving from one end to the other, you can see the metal is being removed in the form of chips. You can see the diameter is being reduced. You can see the diameter is being reduced. So this cutting tool, it is moving. How it is moving? It is moving parallel to the axis of the revolving workpiece. So therefore, we call this as a turning operation. Next comes facing operation. In this facing operation, if you observe here, the cutting tool how it is moving now moving it is moving parallel to the axis of the revolving uh, sorry it is moving perpendicular so it is moving in this direction and this is uh, the axis of a revolving workpiece that is it is moving in the perpendicular direction so when it is moving in the perpendicular direction 
it is developing the flat surfaces as well as now it is reducing the length of a given work piece it is reducing the length of a given work piece so therefore in simple words facing is an operation where the cutting tool moves in a direction perpendicular to the axis of the rotation of the work piece to reduce the length of a given work piece and produce flat surface whereas in the turning operation it moves sorry in the facing operation the cutting tool moves perpendicular to the axis of the rotation of the given work piece to reduce the length of the given work piece whereas in the turning operation we are reducing the diameter of the given work piece here we are reducing length in the turning operation the diameter so you can see here how we are reducing the diameter the length of the work piece in this particular video so you can see here when the cutting tool approaches this work piece it is moving in this forward direction that is perpendicular to the axis of the rotation of the work piece and you can see the surface is being removed to reduce the length of the work piece here yes the work piece is under rotation the cutting tool approaches it is moving perpendicular to the axis so you can see the material is being removed in the form of chips and you can see the length of the material is being reduced so for the facing operation the length of the material is being reduced this is for our facing similarly we can go even for our next operation that is our knurling operation so in the knurling operation if you observe here there is particular a knurling tool and this knurling tool once it moves over a surface it is developing some pattern so what is this so many times we need a grip for holding the devices to develop that grip we are developing with the help of an knurling tool which has already some designs so you can see some of the designs are in the form of a straight pattern there are some angled patterns or even some uh, diamond patterns also which you can see here so you have to transfer these patterns to the revolving rotating workpiece and the uh, lathe machine itself which is in the lathe machine so how it is done here so right now if you see in this knurling operation here also there is a knurling tool which has some patterns the workpiece is supported with the help of a dead center more important is during the knurling operation we are reducing the speed of the machine which means when compared to facing and turning operations the speed is lower here and at the lower speeds when the workpiece is rotating you don't forget to show this one you should show that the workpiece is in rotation while representing this arrow mark then this knurling tool it is being traversed over this workpiece in the longitudinal direction such that this pattern whatever is present on the knurling tool it is transferred to this work piece such that a pattern can be developed on the work piece so sometimes we have to move once only or sometimes two more passes are required to develop the patterns so just the patterns which are developed on this work piece we can have a perfect grip for holding the work pieces so here we are having a video here also which you can see how this is done here so already some patterns they have designed here i will show how these patterns they have designed on this surface so right now you can see yes see some patterns is being developed again little bit yeah you can see here how the knurling tool it is giving its designs to this particular work piece so that you can develop a form of a diamond shape comes our thread cutting operation so in the thread cutting operation basically in our homes you have seen the screws threads screws bolts which are required for fixing the electricity boards or anywhere so on the, to fix that one you need some design the form of threads so generally threads which are developed on the workpiece they are in the form of a v-shaped structure or square shaped structure we call them as v threads or square threads so in this figure what you are seeing it is nothing but a thread cutting operation the cutting tool it is moved over the workpiece in such a fashion that the threads are being developed with the help of a lead screw which is responsible for developing the threads and these threads are sufficient enough to hold the screws and nuts together so during the operation the thread profile is developed is mounted on the tool post then to develop this one we are using a 
required thread profile it may be a square thread or it may be a v thread in this picture right now you are seeing it is an v thread structure so that we can develop the v profile on these threads so right now you can see there is a v thread structure so we can develop v threads on this work piece continuously the v threads on both sides yes in this fashion so these are the v threads so the v threads which you are observing here they are sponsoring you developed on on this work piece as the cutting tool moves from the one end to the other end over the work piece you are also keep in mind the speed of the machine has to be reduced here the rotation of the lead screw gives the required motion to the carriage will relate to the work piece and which is essential for uh, is essential for giving the feel to the machine apart from that the depth of the cut is selected and the tool is made to move parallel to the axis of rotation of the work piece with the help of some automatic arrangement that is with the help of a carriage uh, carriage which is been uh, locked by the split nut so as this thread cutting is passed from one end to the end you can see in the bottom it is developing some of the cases such as uh, the threads so you can see here in the bottom there is a v thread has been continuously developed on this one metal is been removed in the form of the chips so as this work piece is moving you can see here it is removing the threads from this particular work piece the form it is developing the material uh, threads on this work piece here this is regarding thread cutting operation next is the drilling operation so drilling operation it can be also carried in the lathe machine where the drill bit is placed inside uh, the tail stock so here is the drill bit which is located inside this is the drill bit and it is placed inside the tail stock and this drill bit is turned with the help of the hand wheel at the same time it is brought in contact with the work piece which is under continuous rotation so as in the continuous rotation when this drill bit moves along the axis of the work piece it is removing the material to develop cylindrical hole in very simple words you can say that to produce a cylindrical hole with the help of a revolving tool we define it as a drilling operation so in one end of the uh, one side the work piece is located inside the chuck other end of the work piece it is being supported with the help of drill bit and as the drill feed is being given in this direction it uh, moves forward to develop the uh, cylindrical hole inside the work piece so here also we are having a video where you can understand how the hole is being developed here let us see the video yes you can see here as a drill bit proceeds inside inside you can see the material is being removed through the twisted sides in the form of the chips in the form of the chips this is regarding drilling operation next comes our taper turning operation so in the taper turning uh, already we have discussed in the, uh, in the first uh, operation that is a turning operation where we were discussing that uh, when the cutting tool is moving uh, parallel to the axis of the rotation of the work piece uh, the material is being removed to reduce the diameter we call it as turning operation but here uh, with the turning operation which we are developed there we were uh, developing to the we have a cylindrical surface but using our taper turning operation which you are seeing right now here uh, we can develop the conical surfaces to develop the conical surfaces we are using this taper turning operation so for your syllabus we are having taper turning developed by two methods one is by offsetting the tail stock method another one is by swiveling the compound rest so now at the bottom you can see there is a offsetting the tail stock method where you can see that this is the live center where within which the workpiece is being placed it is our drill chuck and normally for every operation we have seen that if this is our work piece if it is located in this fashion this is our axis this comes the chuck of the machine which is under rotation this is our rotation of the work piece and it is being supported with the help of the dead stock that is the uh, tail stock dead center that is like this it is the general phenomena now in this method what we are doing is the axis which you are seeing here this particular part it is been shifted to a new position here so when it is being shifted to a new position then what happens to your work piece this work piece position it changes instead of this it comes in this direction now the work piece it is it is been now in this direction yes the work piece 
it comes in this direction so this is the new axis of this dead center so whatever the distance it is being moved we call this as offset distance we can call it as this as offset distance so therefore this staple turning we are using for offsetting method itself so what we are doing in this offsetting method as i was telling you we are shifting the axis of the rotation of the workpiece at an angle what is that angle that is the angle and thing but it is angle alpha which you are seeing here this is the angle alpha which you are shifting here which is moving parallel to the lathe axis and this method we are using to develop some conical surfaces that is in this particular fashion so if you observe carefully this type of conical surfaces we are developing with the help of a taper turning method instead of cylindrical we go for developing of a conical surfaces this is regarding this particular method of setting tail stock method another one we have compound slide method in the sorry swirling the compound rest method so in this swirling the compound rest method whatever the compound rest you are seeing here it is uh, parallel it is been already it is initially parallel to the axis of this uh, lathe axis now in this figure what you are seeing right now it is been uh, rotated at same angle so how it is been rotated it is been rotated with the help of this uh, circular base so you can see on the circle the compound rest which is on the circular base it is having some angles you can see here some values which are uh, the small units dimensions lines have been marked so by setting to a particular angle the cutting tools position it is shifted to a particular angle and as you go on giving the feed it develops the tapered surface why you call it as swirling because the circular base which you are seeing here if this is your center point this uh, this particular compound rest table it can move in both directions it can move in this direction as well as in the other direction also that is the reason we call it as uh, this method as uh, swiveling the compound rest so in this uh, swiveling compound rest we are supporting the compound rest which supports the tool it is swiveled to the desired angle that is angle alpha it is being swiveled and then the cutting tool is moved over the surface to develop the required tapered surface to develop to have an angle we should have the calculations using some values that is the larger diameter smaller diameter as well as to what length we want to carry this tapering surface so that is nothing but using this particular procedure that is tan alpha capital d minus small d by 2l where d is larger diameter of the conical surface small d is a small minor diameter of the conical surface l is the what to what length you need to carry out this one we get that alpha and that alpha we set it on this particular circular uh, scale to in this particular fashion to get the desired thing so this is regarding the compound rest method So there are some taper turning videos, <coughs> which is including uh, even our the tooth methods as well as another method also you shall see here. This method initially they are discussing. This method is not there for our syllabus, but you can know the procedure how you can develop the upper turning given by this method also. It is the form tool method also. So he is showing the headstock, tail stock, you can see here. So as I was telling in the headstock, we can having the operations. This is the live center where the workpiece rotates. This is the tool port, and this is the circular base where you can rotate this one. This is the tool post. Yes, this is the cutting tool. This is the carriage wheel. Yes. This this method which you are seeing right now, it is not there for a syllabus, but you can go through this one. That is regarding the form tool method. It is. So the cutting tool which you are placing, it should be placed in such a fashion that it is responsible for doing this one. So this is the tailstock axis. We have normally, if you see this will be axis, 
but the axis we have shifted to some away from the original axis such that you can get the required taper surface. So you can see here, this is the chuck within which the workpiece is being loaded. The tail stock axis, you can see this much position we have been shifted the axis. So once this cutting tool moves over this one, we will get the required conical surface. So you can see here how it is being done, yes. Material is being removed in the form of chips. You can see the conical surface is being developed slowly from here. Yeah. See. As I was telling you, D minus T by two L. Then next contrast method, which I was telling you. This is the circular base on which we are having the markings. There is a scale where you can set this one to any angle what you have calculated that is the value of alpha. So the workpiece is being rolled in the chuck. Compound slot on which there is a there is a circular base having some values. As you can see here, the values they are there here. Now you can see it is being shifted to some angle by loosening. And now this one you can move over the surface to develop the required conical surface it is in this particular fashion yeah so as you go on giving the feed the material is being removed to develop conical surfaces so you can see here the surface is being developed so this is it so these are the things you need to know 